At the end of 2021, the Belgian government decided to produce an extra 3.5 gigawatts of wind energy in the Princess Elizabeth zone in the Belgian part of the North Sea, and this by 2030. The Princess Elizabeth zone will also host an energy island developed by Elia. This energy island, called the Princess Elizabeth Island, is a first and an important future-oriented electricity hub. Cables from the new offshore wind zone and from future interconnectors with other European countries, such as the United Kingdom and Denmark, will arrive there. With this project, called MOG2, Elia is taking an important step in developing a European electricity grid at sea and helping to achieve the European climate ambitions. For this challenging MOG2 project, Deme and Jan de Nul have combined forces and qualities once more. We bring you TM Edison, an entirely Belgian and fully integrated joint venture with extensive EPCI experience. We firmly believe that we are fully capable of fulfilling ALIA's requirements for the MOG2 project. This animation video concisely shows how we successfully bring this challenging and prestigious project to life. After a design phase, the caisson production starts at our fabrication yard. We use a construction lane that consists of five stations for the different construction steps. Assembly of the reinforcement of base slab, concrete works of base slab, slip forming of the walls, installation of J-tubes and hang-off room, construction of the roof slab and construction of sea walls. To reach the highest quality standards, we execute all these works on land. Once a caisson is fully cured, it's loaded out on a semi-submersible barge and towed to a launching pit in the Kalot Harbour at North Seaport, where it's floated. Subsequently, the floating caisson is towed to the Scaldia Harbour at North Seaport. At this location, Demir owns a 600 meter long key wall where caissons can be temporarily stored awaiting their offshore installation. Trailing suction hopper dredger type Bradel starts the pre-construction dredging at the offshore location. Afterwards, large fall pipe vessels type Simon Stevin and Flintstone install the rubble mount for caisson foundations, the scour protection and the slope of the first layer of the tow protection along the perimeter of the island. Simon Stevin prepares and levels the filter bed of the caissons. The caisson installation then starts at the south side of the island. Four tugboats tow a caisson from North Seaport to the offshore location. There we position the caisson using pre-laid anchors and winches put on previously installed caissons. One survey confirms the position of the caisson. It's fully ballasted with water. The caisson installation continues at the southwest and the southeast side until all 14 caissons are installed. A DP2 multi-purpose vessel then installs the caisson joints while sand filling of the caissons is executed by pumping from a hopper dredger. Afterwards, a subsea rock installation vessel, fall pipe vessels and a multi-purpose vessel install the large amounts of rock for tow protection and scour protection. The open edge of the last installed caissons is temporarily protected for the winter season and half of the island is sand filled until low water line. In the port of Ostend, a precast yard is installed at the Rebo Key for fabrication of cable culverts. These elements are loaded on barges for offshore installation. The offshore works resume with filter bed installation and leveling, caisson installation and sand filling, and tow and scour protection on the second half of the island. After sand filling the south part of the island and compacting it using vibro flotation, we install a concrete batching plant on the south part of the island. The sand filling and compaction of the north part of the island continues. The rock revetment, assuring a good wave climate in the CTV harbour, is installed. The secondary wave walls for the east side of the island are also supplied. Concrete finishing works on the island, cable culvert and secondary wave wall installation continues. Equipment and batching plant are demobilized and the island is ready for electrical installation works. 
In summary, TM Edison will provide an energy island that is entirely Belgian built with limited dependency on subcontractors and with maximum use of Belgium workforce and company-owned equipment. Both Deme and Jan de Nul own an extensive fleet of offshore vessels, including dredges, jackups and foul pipe vessels. They provide automatic backup and contingency planning, which is a rare luxury in the current overheated market demand for those types of vessels. In conclusion, we believe to be the most suited party for the execution of the MOH2 project. We are excited and looking forward to designing, building and delivering the world's first energy island with you.